Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Mia. I'm a professional pastry chef and I love making videos with tips and tricks on how you can pursue a similar career path. So for today's video, I decided to talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of working in the industry, being a chef, whether that is pastry or savory, pretty much anything uh, to do with being a chef in general has its cons. As much as we don't want to admit it because you just want to pretend that everything's perfect, nothing is perfect, there's always going to be a bad side to every situation, and there are definitely some things that I wish I had known before I got into the industry. I don't think I would have changed my opinion or changed my desire to be a chef. It definitely would have made me consider the other side of things and I would have felt more prepared instead of just thrown into it to find out all these things on my own. So I think it's pretty important. Just a warning, I am going to start with a pro so we can start off on a light foot, but because I have an even number of both pros and cons, that does mean we're going to end on a con. So just be aware of that. So the very first pro that we have is that it's something new every day, not once if I had a repetitive day. I always go into work and there's always a different list of things to do. You know, maybe one night we sold 30 lemon tarts and two cheesecakes. So now we have to make all these lemon tarts and no cheesecakes. But the next night it could be completely swapped. We have to make all cheesecakes and no lemon tarts. So it definitely switches things up. It makes you feel like you're having a unique experience every time you go into work. Um, I can't remember the last time I just felt like I was day in and day out doing the exact same thing. It's always something new, especially if you are in restaurants, you're going to have different experience with customers and servers and things like that that'll switch up your day and make you feel like you're not just sitting at a computer, typing, doing, you know, getting your list of tasks for the day and getting into work and getting out. There's definitely a lot of different challenges throughout the day that you have to uh, keep yourself on your toes for. So the very first con that we have is that it's really long hours and I feel like this is obvious but at the same time I wish that somebody had told me exactly what that means. I know what long hours means meaning like eight hours is pretty long time that's like an average shift i'm talking 10 to 12 hour shifts being the norm a lot of people will come in even earlier than they're scheduled because they want to set up their stations and get going before they have to really buckle down and focus in on what they're doing so a lot of people come in early which means their days become even longer and this really sets the tone on whether you're going to be a workaholic or a homebody. If you're a homebody or you like to do other things outside of work, like hiking or things that are going to take up a lot of time. So a normal schedule for a chef in restaurants, I believe is 2 o'clock to close. Let's say close is at 11 p.m. And let's say we have an hour commute on either end, which is a long time. But trust me, it's pretty typical <laughs> depending on if you live in a city or not. So if I start work at two o'clock that means I have to leave my house by one o'clock and if I get out of work at 11 p.m. that means I get home at midnight so if I have to leave my house at one o'clock and I get home at midnight that means I only have 13 hours to sleep eat do all my errands all my chores get anything else done that I have to do spend time with friends spend time with family you know enjoy my hobbies and that's only 13 hours of a 24-hour day so you really have to consider if those things are very important to you or if you are full force this is the most important thing to me in life and this is what I want to be doing. So the next pro I have is that it's always a very fun environment. I haven't worked in a restaurant that doesn't let us listen to music while we're prepping and getting stuff done. I don't think every restaurant in the world will let you listen to music but everyone that I've worked at has let us play music out loud and we all sing along, we make jokes, have fun and it's always a really good time. People are so nice in the industry. They really make you feel welcome because they know how hard it is and how hard it is to, I guess, work really long hours and you're so separated from everything else in the real world that they always make it a really fun time. Everybody's always super outgoing. So always, always a fun work environment. I really love being at work. So the next con that I have is that it may be a fun work environment, but you're gonna have no social life. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the long hours thing, but not only do you have long hours, you're going to come home from work tired because you're either standing all day or meticulously doing anything. You may be lifting bags of flour that are 50 pounds each. So you're going to come home and you're going to feel really tired. Even if you get home from work at 8 p.m. and you think, oh, it's only 8 p.m. You know, I have all of these, this time to go out to dinner or go, you know, out with my friends, go to the bar, anything like that. 
it doesn't really work like that if you get home and you're exhausted you know i passed up a lot of opportunities to go out and do things just because i wanted to go home and get some sleep and you know just rest a little bit so even though you may have the time to do it depending on what your schedule looks like you might not have the energy to have a social life and i think that's really important for people to know because a lot of times you know they think oh well you know i can go hang out with people in the morning because i go into work at 3 p.m that might be that might be true but if you go into work at 3 p.m you might be tired you might sleep in and you don't have time to do anything else because you have no social life everybody doesn't have a social life in the industry and that means your coworkers will become your friends which is an amazing pro everywhere that i've worked everybody that works in the kitchen becomes super close really tight knit being in a kitchen is an incredible experience for bonding. You know, you go through really busy nights where everybody's super stressed out and then you go through slow nights where we're all joking and laughing and you know, having a good time. And it really creates such a fun environment where everybody can feel like they're so comfortable around each other. They're comfortable being stressed out around each other and they're comfortable having fun. And that, you know, it brings people together really quickly. And I love that about the industry because I really feel like I have so many friends and they all relate to what I do and they, they know why it's so important to me because they're also chefs. So if holidays are super important to your family, you might have to reconsider because holidays and weekends, you're going to have to work, especially the holiday season around Thanksgiving and Christmas, all through New Year's, even Valentine's Day is the busiest time of the year. I know it's weird to think that winter time is the busiest time of the year for pretty much any industry, but it really is. Thanksgiving, you're gonna be making pies, pastries, pretty much anything. And then Christmas comes around and you're gonna be making cakes and cookies and all these things for Christmas. And then New Year's happens and a lot of restaurants will do New Year's Eve dinner, which means you're gonna be in work until about 3 a.m. working, which means you're not gonna be able to go to a New Year's Eve party. And then you have Valentine's Day, which is always going to be a busy night of the year. Even Mother's Day, super busy. You're never going to get Mother's Day off again. So if those are things that are super important to you, you want to make sure you have holidays with your family instead of rescheduling it for maybe the next week and pretending that it's the actual holiday. And then that's a super important thing for you to think about since holidays are really important to the industry. They're huge money makers. Even weekends, my weekend, my days off are Monday, Tuesdays. So I work Wednesday through Sunday. So I don't have the Saturday, Sunday weekend like everybody else. If my friends who work corporate jobs wanna hang out on a Saturday or a Sunday, I just can't do it. And then I have to hang out with them on days that they're working. If you have a lot of people in your life where those things are really important, then that's something you should consider. The next pro that I have is that if you wanna be a chef, there is a whole world of options past chef for you to choose from. You can work in a bakery making breads and croissants and scones, or you can be a cake decorator and you just stack and decorate cakes all day, or you can work in a restaurant and you know do service, or you can work at a resort or a country club and do everything. And there's so many things for you to choose from, and that's just the pastry side of it. Savory has its whole realm of things that you can choose from there. So if you know you love cooking and you know you love you know, that kind of environment, there are so many places and so many opportunities for you to sit down and look at and choose from that you know you'll have a different experience than maybe the next person. And you know you can really hone in on your niche and what you want to do. My camera stopped recording, so hopefully the angle is the, pretty much the same because I had to take it off the tripod to fix it. Anyway, so the next con is that you're gonna be on your feet for a really long time. I know that I mentioned having long hours previously, but you're gonna be standing for pretty much every single one of those hours. You may have an hour lunch break. I eat mine standing up. So I'm standing literally the whole time I'm at work. And if you have flat feet, bad knees, a bad back, pretty much anything that can affect your ability to stand for a long period of time, it may not be the job for you, or you might wanna do something a little bit more slower, maybe cake decorating, where that you get to sit down and actually you know, rest for a little bit. Uh, it also has really affected my posture. I noticed that I have really bad posture from leaning over my work that I'm doing all day. So like I said, if you have a bad back or you're really conscious about your posture, then that might be something to consider. So the next pro that I have is that you always have a chance to be creative. One of the main reasons why I chose pastry over savory is because I love getting creative and I love creating works of art 
So you really have a fun chance to make things visually creative and then you can also make things creative on the taste end of things and try new flavor profiles and just really have fun experimenting and trying new things that you might not have tried before. It's really cool to see something that you thought of in your head come to life as a vision. One of my favorite things to do is scroll down Pinterest and save ideas that I like and try to incorporate new ideas into some plated desserts that I draw up and it's always really fun to see um, you know, one idea turned into the next and it's really fun to be creative. The next con I have is pretty similar to the last con, but it's very hard on your body, not even just your feet from standing, but a lot of pastry chefs get carpal tunnel in their hands from holding piping bags or doing really fine meticulous work. It's also really bad for your knees because of the standing, bad for your posture because of the standing. You have to lift a lot of things, so it might be bad for your nerves. I know one of the things that I struggle with is getting nerve damage in my feet from standing too long. So that's something to seriously consider if you don't think you have the stamina to keep up with your health. The next pro that I have is a fun one. I always am trying new foods that I probably wouldn't have been able to try if I wasn't in the industry. One of my favorite things that I've ever tried was Wagyu beef with white truffle bernays. Delicious, by the way. White truffles and Wagyu are probably things that I would have never tried if I wasn't in the industry. I can't see myself paying for a 100 plus dollar steak just to eat it. I probably wouldn't have known the quality difference and with white truffles, Again, I probably would have never paid for white truffles because of how expensive they are. So it's very fun to be able to try new foods. I have learned so many things that I didn't know existed. Finger limes, tay berries, just a bunch of different fruits that I had no idea existed, cara cara oranges, all of these things that really can just make a dish extra special that I had no idea or even out there in the world. It's so fun to discover new things. So the next con is pretty serious. Drugs and alcohol are pretty prominent in the industry. If you're not super big into drinking and you don't do drugs, and then it might be hard for you to bond with some of the people that you work with, or you might feel a little bit uncomfortable when they bring those kinds of things up in conversation. I know that I'm not a heavy drinker and I don't do drugs, and sometimes I felt a little out of place in conversations about those things. And when I was invited to bars and stuff like that, I never really wanted to drink a lot. Um, so I felt a little out of place. If you think that this is gonna be something that you'll feel uncomfortable around, then that's definitely something to consider. So this is the last pro that I have, is that there are opportunities worldwide. Everywhere that there are people, there's going to be a food industry because every single person has to eat obviously so you can pretty much do this career wherever you want it really just depends on what you want out of the career for me i went to san francisco because one of my main goals was working for michelin star chefs and making those connections but if you really just want to work in a small bakery have that experience then you can find that pretty much anywhere in the world if you want to work at a small restaurant or own a small restaurant then again you can find that pretty much anywhere in the world and it's so nice to know that if there's ever an emergency or anything like that, I can move pretty much anywhere and still have the same career. So the very last con that I have is that honestly, the pay sucks. Not gonna lie to you, most people start at minimum wage. Wherever you are, that's pretty much the starting wage is minimum. Uh, it's pretty hard to work up, even salaried employees, less than 100,000 for an executive chef position in most places you'd have to work for a pretty large company to make over a hundred thousand dollars so if you are really money motivated and you really think that you just want to work in restaurants or work at for somebody else and not own your own businesses later on in life then you have to really consider the fact that you may not be able to make the salary that you want all right everybody that's the end of my list thank you so much for watching make sure you like the video if you learned something new about the industry that you didn't know before also while you're down there hit the subscribe button if you like this video and if you want you can click the bell and get notified whenever i post a new video thank you so much and i'll see you next time bye guys